Hey guys, it's Buddha Jim. I've been called out by Mr. Race and IQ himself, Stobles. What has really surprised me about this challenge is the fact that a lot of people have assumed I wouldn't respond. Uh, take a look at this clip from Schizo A Priori. But her Buddha would not respond. Is in this moment, but her Buddha will not respond to your challenge. Yeah, won't do it. Now, I don't bring this up to rub it in Schizo's face. Um, this is just one example of many I could have used. Uh, you can go around and see the numerous comments assuming that I simply couldn't respond. What could I say? Uh, and I point this out because the assumption that the arguments Sotos makes are unassailable are dangerous. All ideas are subject to valid criticism. There's no reason to believe Stodl's views are any different. So let's take a look at Stodl's challenge in his own words. And uh, the best way to combat racism is the best way to combat any ideology is to undermine the underlying assumptions. Because I've noticed that, you know, it's surprising how many facts very different ideologies have to accept. You know, I mean, there's all sorts of weird ideologies running around nowadays. But they all have to accept an astonishingly high amount of facts, and only on things that are assumed, that's where you get the differences. The underlying assumptions, that's where you get the differences. And if you want to change someone's ideology, you need to change the assumptions. So, if you want to change the assumptions of racists, you're going to have to deal with psychometrics, and you're going to you're going to you're going to get IQ'd out, <laughs> really. Um, but there are really um, there's more than this. But I think that you would go a long way to combating racism if you could de could uh, debunk these eight subjects, and I'll and I'll put them in the yeah in the description. What stands out to me here is that Stodles presumes that racism is based on the science he goes on to talk about race and IQ. That is, once I explain away his eight points, although he made it clear he has more, should I solve those, then I'll undermine the ideological underpinnings of racism. This is apparently supposed to culminate in my explanation of why evolution stops at the neck, a particularly strange straw man argument that I will get to later. Stodles places the cart in front of the horse. This IQ data cannot explain racism. The IQ test is a little over 100 years old. Racism predates it by centuries. In fact, we can look back over the last couple thousand years and find an amazing number of scientific, philosophical, and religious justifications for racial disparities. Are we really to believe that sane, rational, open-minded people came to their racist convictions only after a thorough and scientific explanation? Or is it more reasonable to believe that racist scientists and philosophers base their research and biased conclusions to fit their a priori racist beliefs. In fact, does the information Sorrels presents have any meaning or relevance outside of racist assumptions? Let's begin by assuming Stodles, and by extension Rushton, Jensen, Murray, and the rest of the pioneer scientists uh, that Stodles is so fond of are right about race and IQ. According to Arthur Jensen, a professor emeritus of educational psychology at the University of California, Berkeley, and a figure often cited by Sotos, the total deficit between whites and blacks translates into 15 IQ points of difference, and that of these, seven or seven and a half points could be attributed to a genetic deficit among blacks. Now, what could this seven to seven one half points mean in terms of educability? It should be clear that the answer must be not much and probably nothing. It is essentially meaningless. The reality is that the information Stodl spends so much time and energy talking about is relatively meaningless unless one adopts a racist point of view. Consider the following from the world-renowned linguist and political analyst Noam Chomsky. Consider the question of race and intellectual endowments. In a decent society, there would be no social consequence to any discovery that might be made about this question. An individual is what he is. It is only on racist assumptions that he is regarded as an instance of his race category, so that social consequences ensue from the discovery that a mean 
for a certain racial category with respect to some capacity is such and such. Eliminating racist assumptions, the facts have no social consequences, whatever they may be, and are therefore not worth knowing. From this point of view, at least, if there is any purpose to an investigation of the relation between race and some capacity, it must arrive from the scientific significance of the question. It is difficult to be precise about questions of scientific merit. Roughly, an inquiry has scientific merit if its results might bear on some general principle of science. One doesn't conduct inquiries into the density of blades of grass on various lawns or innumerable other trivial and pointless questions. Likewise, inquiry into such questions as race and IQ appears to be of virtually no scientific interest. Conceivably, there might be interest in correlations between partially heritable traits, but if someone were interested in this question, he would surely not select such characteristics as race and IQ, each an obscure amalgam of complex properties. Rather, he would ask whether there is a correlation between measurable and significant traits, say, eye color and length of the big toe. It is difficult to see how the study of race and IQ can be justified on any scientific grounds. If the inquiry has no scientific significance and no social significance apart from the, the racist assumption that an individual must be regarded not as what he is, but rather as standing at the mean of his race category, it follows that it has no merit at all. The question then arises, why is it pursued with such zeal? Why is it taken seriously? Attention naturally turns to the racist assumptions that do confer some importance on the inquiry if they are accepted. In a racist society, inquiry into race and IQ can be expected to reinforce prejudice pretty much independent of the outcomes of the inquiry. Given such concepts as race and IQ, it is to be expected that the results of any inquiry will be obscure and conflicting, the arguments complex and difficult for the layman to follow. For the racist, the judgment not proven will be read probably so. There will be an ample scope for the racist to wallow in his prejudices. The very fact that the inquiry is undertaken suggests that its outcome is of some importance. And since it is important only on racist assumptions, these assumptions are insinuated even when they are not expressed. For such reasons as these, a scientific investigation of genetic characteristics of Jews would have been appalling in Nazi Germany. There can be no doubt that the investigation of race and IQ has been extremely harmful to the victims of American racism. I have heard black educators describe in vivid terms the suffering and injury imposed on children who are made to understand that science has demonstrated this or that about their race, or even finds it necessary to raise the question. This is one reason I think we have so few people challenging Stobel's on his videos. Only a racist would think that this information is important. If science found out that people of Irish-Italian ancestry are, on average, less intelligent than whoever, what would it matter? Would it make me stupid, or would I continue to be judged on my own merit? Debunking the claims made by Stobel's may deprive racists of a particular argument, but it's not going to make racism go away. To believe such would suggest that there's something rational about racism. Except the Stotals or other races to prove their views are rational. I see no such evidence. It is racism that, that drives this type of science. And it is only within a racist framework that this information takes on any meaning. Stotals has it backwards. Now at this point you may be thinking that this is a duck. That I simply can't argue the points made by Stotals and so on being slick. It's not the case at all. I'm simply pointing out an underlying assumption made by Stotels in his arguments. Nobody becomes a racist because they find out blacks have an average genetic deficit of 7 and 1 half IQ points. That's just ignorance. I will be addressing the scientific merits of Stotels' arguments. And the way it looks, this will take a few videos to do. So I'd like you to consider this the opening salvo against this ridiculous notion of race and IQ. And also a continuation of the series on racism. There's quite a bit of information to cover and I simply can't do it all in one video.